It is one of the best times on the sports calendar, right? March Madness, it's time for brackets, it's time for upsets. How far will Grand Canyon, how far will the University of Arizona advance in the tournament? The two burning questions here in the Valley of the Sun, right? Well, let's jump in to the brackets. This is what we're here for, right? As we preview the first round action here of the NCAA tournament, all eyes locally here on Grand Canyon, the old 12-5 matchup with St. Mary's. That game will go down on Friday in Spokane, Washington. Of course, we know that the Havocs travel. GCU has one of, if not the best, fan base in all of college basketball. I'll be interested to see how the Spokane region there reacts to this game as well because, of course, Gonzaga plays in Spokane. Gonzaga is St. Mary's rival. GCU may have a double home court advantage here. The St. Mary's fans that travel, other than them, maybe everybody else in that arena will be rooting for GCU. And this is a tough matchup for Bryce Drew's team, of course. For Bryce Drew, this is his third NCAA appearance with GCU in four years at the helm of the program. It's been an incredible run for him there at Grand Canyon. But this St. Mary's team, they have only lost one time since Christmas. They beat Gonzaga two out of their three matchups this year. And they like to play slow. This Gales team, they're in the bottom 10 in the country in pace. They like to slow the game down, muck it up, play defense. Grand Canyon, they like to get out and score. And they have a lot of scores on their roster. So when you look at the kind of the tail of the tape here on this in this matchup, 58.7 points per game is what St. Mary's has given up to their opponents this year. GCU is averaging almost 80 points per game this year. So when you look at this kind of in that uh, perspective there, it's really two opposites kind of coming together in this matchup. Can St. Mary's slow the game down like they have all year? Like I said, they've only lost one time since Christmas, and it was to Gonzaga. However, they beat Gonzaga two of those three matchups. Can St. Mary's slow the game down? Can they get GCU out of rhythm? Because GCU, they can. They're very good defensively, but GCU wants to get up and down. They want to score. It's what we've seen throughout their season this year and the reason that they had their best season ever since moving up to Division One. The reason that GCU fans should still feel confident in this game is because they have an NBA caliber wing in Tyon Grant Foster, who is one of the best stories in all of college athletics, coming back from the heart condition he had and coming back to now lead this uh, this GCU team after a couple transfers. And the way that this GCU roster is constructed this year, they're not really reliant on just one guy. Yes, they have Tyon Grant Foster who can get a bucket when they need him to. They have Tyon Grant Foster who in the WAC tournament when the offense kind of bogged down, Tyon drove got fouls, got and ones, got to the free throw line, and started to just build momentum that way. But they also have a lot of guys like a Ray Harrison, second year with this GCU program. He can get a bucket when they need it. Gabe McLaughlin, that'll be a guy to keep an eye on because Gabe is dealing with a hip injury, I guess we'll call it right now. He's got some hip pain. He hasn't been himself lately. Three points in the semifinal of the WAC, eight points in the championship game of the WAC. But if he can get back to... A better level of health, let's say. He said he's feeling better, but if he can get even healthier going into this matchup on Friday, GCU's got guys. Loke Wurr coming off the bench. He had a great game in the championship game of the WAC tournament. GCU's got guys they can throw at St. Mary's. Every time, every time this time of the year, when you look at the brackets, you say, okay, everybody likes the the 12-5 upset. That's kind of the, the classic upset pick. Very rarely do you get a 12-5 matchup like this where you have two mid-major schools so that kind of maybe throws a wrench in this but I, I like GCU's chances in this matchup also because like I mentioned St. Mary's wants to slow this game down they're going to want to muck it up they're going to want to make this a defensive battle GCU's got guys that they can throw at them like I mentioned a few already but how about Javon Blackshirt coming back from the knee injury he suffered he's coming back he's starting to really get into form here 14 points for him in the WAC championship game he really swung momentum at times with his three-point shot I like GCU's chances in this. Bryce Drew really has his finger on the pulse of this team this year. They had they wobbled a little bit, you know, uh, back-to-back road losses near the very end of the season, but they righted the ship. They looked fairly dominant in the WAC tournament. If GCU can beat St. Mary's on Friday, it would be their first NCAA tournament win in school history, and what a story it would be. Of course, the Final Four is here in Glendale, State Farm Stadium, the beginning of April. I'm not saying Grand Canyon is necessarily going to play in it, but if they get off to a quick start in the tournament, you never know what could happen. I just love the way that this GCU roster is constructed. If you look at the other part of the West Regional bracket here, you go your eyes locally, maybe you get drawn to the bottom, Arizona and Long Beach State. 
quickly before we dive into uh, Arizona, Long Beach State maybe one of the craziest stories in the NCAA tournament. Hear me out on this. Long Beach State fires their head coach, Dan Monson, at the end of the regular season. Basically, going into the Big uh, Big West Conference tournament, they f- relieve their head coach. They say they're not going to extend Dan Monson, and they're going to move on, but he's going to coach through the tournament, and after that, they will search for a new head coach. What did Long Beach State do? They rallied around their fired coach. They won the Big West, and now they're in the big dance, and they're still led by Dan Monson. I mean, how crazy is that? What coach gets fired, still coaches his team to the NCAA tournament, and is now coaching in the NCAA tournament, knowing that when they lose in the tournament, he's going to be without a job. That is that is an unbelievable uh, story. One of the craziest stories coming into uh, March Madness this year. But Salt Lake City, that'll be the showdown Thursday early in the morning, uh, 11 o'clock here locally in Arizona. Arizona. Long Beach State, the Wildcats, led by Caleb Love, 18 points per game, the transfer from North Carolina. Senior leadership between him and Omar Ballo, and really when you look at the way that Tommy Lloyd has constructed this roster, I mean, I talked at length about the way GCU has set up what they're doing there with Bryce Drew, but Tommy Lloyd, he's got everybody rolling. All five starters averaging about 10 points per game. A little odd down the stretch if you look at for the way U of A finished the year, a loss to USC near the end of the regular season. You could think, all right, well, they had everything locked up. They were, you know, their eyes were on the Pac-12 tournament, the last ever Pac-12 tournament in Vegas. But then Arizona also lost to Oregon. Yes, Oregon went on to win the Pac-12 tournament, but Arizona bows out early in the Pac-12 tournament. It probably, maybe, possibly cost Arizona one of those final number one seeds. They end up going to the two seed. You see, here's the bracket here. They get Long Beach State. Or, you know, Arizona's had a history between Sean Miller, between uh, where they are now with Tommy Lloyd, some weird losses in the NCAA tournament. Buffalo, years back, uh, when they were led by Sean Miller. Last year, of course, Princeton pulled the big upset over Arizona. I don't think that's the way that this Arizona's team is constructed, though. I think having a guy like Caleb Love, the way that he can score... I think changes the dynamic. I mean, we've seen it throughout the season, but I think that changes the dynamic when you are in a tournament setting like this. Obviously, Caleb Love has been here before. He knows how to get it done. Omar Ballo is a steadying presence down low. The the big thing is Omar Ballo needs to be fed. He did not get the ball a lot down the stretch in that Oregon loss, and perhaps that was one of the reasons why they lost to Oregon in the, in the Pac-12 tournament. So Arizona, I think, is set up here. I'll pull the bracket back up here. I think Arizona is set up fairly well to get out, uh, you know, I think it's fairly safe. Obviously, upsets happen, but I think it's fairly safe to say Arizona can get past Long Beach State. Then you get Nevada and Dayton. This is not a terrible spot for Arizona to be in in terms of advancing through here. Um, obviously, anything can happen in March. But the Wildcats seem to have a decent draw here. Salt Lake City, not far, of course. So anticipate Wildcat fans to travel. So both GCU and Arizona in the West bracket. So this is the bottom half of the bracket here. Arizona, the top seed, if you will, in the bottom portion of the West regional bracket. And then uh, GCU there up at the top. North Carolina, obviously the one seed in this spot here. And it's interesting when you look at this, at the Grand Canyon team as well, you know, from the beginning of the season, picked to win the WAC, a lot of, uh, you know, preseason accolades that were well-deserved and well-founded. After Grand Canyon beat San Diego State uh, near Christmas time, some bracketologists at that point said that they may be in that 8-9 matchup in a region. A little wobble down the stretch, GCU falls to the 12 seed. It may actually have helped them if you look at the way the bracket would advance from here because you got if if GCU can beat St. Mary's, you would assume potentially a matchup with Alabama. That's just two teams that are going to want to shoot the lights out of the basketball. That's going to be a it could be a 200 point <laughs> combined uh, college basketball game. A uh, little bit of exaggeration there on my part, but both Alabama and GCU are going to want to score the basketball. So selfishly, I would want to see that matchup because GCU would win their first NCAA tournament uh, game in school history, and then I just I think Alabama and GCU would be a great game. And then down at the bottom of the bracket. I would imagine Arizona advances out of the Long Beach State matchup. Uh, Dayton, Nevada. Dayton obviously will be favored, kind of a toss-up. Either way, I like Arizona to advance out into the uh, Sweet 16, uh, potentially facing Baylor or Clemson or New Mexico or Colgate, however the bracket shakes out. Of course, this time of the year, 
like I said, it's the best time of the year. It's brackets, it's upsets, it's March Madness. We're all going to be glued to our TVs over the next month and change because the road ends here in Glendale, State Farm Stadium, the beginning of April, the Final Four. And, of course, we will be covering it all along the way, and we'll continue to provide updates here online and on Fox Local uh, to – you know, give you some previews, some matchup previews, some advice as you try to fill out your brackets. And, you know, maybe after the first weekend, you got to rip up the bracket, start a new one for the Sweet 16. That's okay. We'll have you covered here on Fox Local.